Hi, this is Jeff Heaton. Welcome to Applications of Deep Neural Networks with Washington University. In this video, we're going to see how to apply L1 and L2 regularization to Kira's deep neural networks. For the latest on my AI course and projects, click subscribe and the bell next to it to be notified of every new video. We can use L1 and 2 regularization with Kira. Just to review L1 and L2, we show their graphs here just so that you can see the effect of the absolute value versus the squaring. You can see that L1, more resembles a Laplace, is a lot sharper, and that is why it will cause coefficients to go to zero, or weights, now that we're dealing with a neural network, to go to zero, whereas L2 is smoother, and it will not necessarily push them to zero like the L1 does. We'll see that we can use both of these, either independently or together, for a neural network. I have a link here that shows you the actual instructions instructions from Kira's on how to do this, but we'll look at some examples that show you how to actually put this into your neural network. We're going to use the sample data set. For this one, we're going to be predicting the product, so we are doing classification. Let's go ahead and run this so that it gets loaded into... Let's go ahead and run this section so that it gets loaded. Okay, the data set is available. So this is where we will do L1 and or L2 regularization. It's done on a per level basis. So you can see here we have an acti uh, activity regularizer, and that uses L1. We can also use a kernel regularizer. I usually use the activity more than the kernel. The activity is dealing with the actual activations of the, of the regularizer, but I have tried back and forth with with both ones to see really which gives me the best result. I do tend to get better results with L2, particularly L2 activity regularizers than L1. I'm typically not trying to actually eliminate features altogether using using it on the neural network. This can be a useful way to do that. You can read up in the Kira's documentation too a little on the difference between activity and kernel. It really has to do with w at what point in the calculation before or act after the activation function is applied that that regularizer is being applied. And that's really all there is to it. Simply placing this as part of the first hidden layer causes the regularizer to be applied. You can also decide to apply a second one here. You can do L2 simply by changing that from L1 to L2. Feel free to adjust that how, however you like. Again, this is another hyperparameter, so it just requires some, some optimization and trial and error. We'll see when we get to the module that discusses Kaggle competitions how we can optimize this automatically using, using Bayesian optimization, or at least get it pushed in a good direction as far as what we want to do with all of these hyperparameters. This is the alpha that we saw earlier. This is just the degree to which this is being applied. If you were to put a zero in here, it, it would simply cancel the L1 out and it would not be applied at all. A one would be full power. You probably do not want to do that. That would make the, the training very unstable. You can go ahead and run this one. It will go through the cross-validation and generate the out-of-sample predictions. We are simply training this for 500 epochs. We're not doing any sort of early stopping because we really want to get a good estimation of how well, say, 500 epochs would do so that we could run this a couple of times with different L1 and L2 values and get an idea of really what what each of these is going to do. Now, as it goes through, you're going to see the accuracy on each fold. This is classification, so we're showing you the percentage that this was able to predict correctly. So on this first one, it was about 66%. And I'll let this go ahead and fast forward to get through the other ones. Okay, and now it's completed. The final accuracy was, as we can see here, 65.95. Now I'm going to show you something else that's somewhat an annoying feature of, of neural networks. We'll see that when you rerun them, the, the scores can vary quite a bit. So remember 65.95. 
And also remember that full two was the best one. We will go ahead and fast forward this so that you don't have to wait for it. Okay, we're done. So notice now it is not 6595 anymore, it's changed. So it looks like it got a little bit worse. If we had tried adjusting things up here, we might falsely think that what we did up there had caused a problem and just was not as good of an adjustment. You also can see that Fold 2, though not the best this time, was still pretty good. That tends to stay the same because we did the seed value for the cross-validation. So up here where we set the random state to 42, that certain folds will definitely be easier than others. And you like that to stay consistent so you can really compare apples to apples, at least on the folds. So we'll see later in this module that there's something called bootstrapping we can do where we run this a whole bunch of times and we get the we get the results back that are then averaged together. So we get a better idea of if we're if our adjustments to the hyperparameters are actually making a difference or not. Thank you for watching this video. In the next video, we're going to look at dropout, which is a type of regularization that was specifically created for neural networks. This content changes often, so subscribe to the channel to stay up to date on this course and other topics in artificial intelligence.